Hi YouTube, and this is JTrain997, and I'm back this time with my review of the G.I. Joe Retaliation Cyber Ninja. Or as I like to call him, Tron. Because that's what this guy reminds me of straight up in the packaging. He's got all these blue highlights on his outfit that make him look like he's just from the Tron universe. Um, don't get me wrong, he's a great looking figure. Um, really interesting. And, I mean, I hate how they're covering up all a lot of the accessories in the package. I mean... You can never completely tell what all's in there. Usually it's just the cheesy action feature, but there's sometimes it's good stuff. But um, speaking of cheesy action feature, he's of course got a zip line like a lot of the figures in this line are coming from. I won't bother going over his accessories until we do actually get him out. On the back of the packaging here, um, and this is one of the figures that really accents it, but I hate that there's no file card on these. I was never the guy that clipped them out and collected them, but still really ticks me off. It says, the Cyber Ninja is the ultimate combination of ancient ninja fighting arts and advanced technology. He almost defies gravity as he stealthily slides down the side of a heavily guarded building with his cybernetic invisibility suit. He slips inside undetected to carry out a lethal sneak attack. So, the whole Tron suit is basically a invisible suit. So that's neat. I mean, it's an interesting little idea. Over here, a couple of the other characters from the line. Um, Dark Ninja, Joe Colton, Alley Viper, and Lady J. So, not too much to say about the box. Let's open him up. And here we have the Cyber Ninja out of the packaging. Now, real quick, this little pamphlet that explains that um, even though I don't like the zip lines, they actually kind of got inventive with this one. They give him the Pursuit of Cobra Firefly backpack with, um, you can see there, the little indentions for the landmines or bombs or whatever it was. Um, they did change the coloring. They gave it some blue highlights to kind of fit with him and made the whole thing silver overall. You can run the core through there, it says, which I think is kind of silly, but hey, they're getting creative. And they also give him this little piece, which I don't know if this is the first time this piece has come out, but it's like a little zip line hook, and I think that looks a lot better than the huge glider backpacks they're giving some of the retaliation figures. So that's a nice little piece, plus you can put all that gear into the backpack. Other than that, he also comes with his rifle, as you can see here. Obviously his um, grappling hook, I mean his um, grapple line, which the other pieces over here, you hook that on like that. I'm not going to go over how these suction cup little things work, they're simple enough to figure out. and It's the least popular part of the figure for me. And um, these pistols, which of course came from Helix originally. Now, on to the Cyber Ninja. If I can get him stationary here. Anyways, get all his gear up here. Oh, and he's obviously got his katana sheath on his back, which I like better than the look of this giant backpack. It just doesn't fit for me. Now, I actually really like the paint job on this guy. When I first saw him previewed, I didn't think he looked like great, but the blue accent really does make him pop. Um, I stand by what I said. He really reminds me of kind of a Tron-inspired character. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It would have been neat if they had done like a variant where he was partially clear, maybe like the suit was kicking in. That would have been great. But pull this, both the swords out. Both the swords do have a tiny bit of blue on them, just to kind of fit with the thing, which I really like. Oh, and obviously, um, no base. This is an old Rise of Cobra base. Really hate that none of the um, retaliation figures are getting bases. Pull his sheath off. Now, as far as his articulation, his head does a full 360. Slide up and down. Arms go out to about here. His shoulder pads are hindering anything beyond that. Um, they may still manage a full 360. Single jointed at the elbow, spin and bend. Um, turn at the glove, not the actual wrist, so there's obviously no hinge at the wrist. Legs go forward, back and out. Double jointed knee, very nice to see. And an ankle joint with what appears, yeah, ankle pivot. So that's nice. Um, if he had the full, if he actually had the wrist articulation, he would have had the full range of movement, which um, he still does have a nice ab crunch, but this vest is hindering it. Um, also, the standard G.I. Joe bases seemed like the um, foot pegs were just not wanting to line up. So I don't know if the Rise of Cobra bases or pegs were a little more narrow or what, but he definitely seems to fit better. So at the end of the day, this is a really cool little addition to your various Cobra Ninjas the Rise of, I mean, the Retaliation line is giving us, um, because we have gotten quite a few ninjas, and we will probably continue to. I can't talk today. Um, this is a really interesting kind of mesh of technology and, you know, the same G.I. Joe ninjas that we love. Now, it's a $10 price tag. Um, obviously, all G.I. Joes are running you that right now. 
that's a little much, and that's me, a diehard G.I. Joe fan, saying that. Um, to me, the golden price for a G.I. Joe, I think, is right around 8 bucks. Because at $10 a piece, I'm really not army building anymore. I mean, he doesn't really want to hold this sword that well. Get that jammed in his hand. Let's get him in a decent pose here for the end of the review. Eh, that's not... Dag on it. Eh, kind of got to put him in here just right to hold it, but he will. Oh, but we're leaving it out for now. Um, $10 is too much, especially for army builders, which I sadly became one and then went straight back out because I couldn't afford it. This is still a great figure, though. Every G.I. Joe collector needs to own one. It doesn't suffer from reduced articulation. Yeah, it's kind of a bizarre-looking figure, but I think that's where it gets a lot of its kick. And that being said, this is J-Train 997 and I'll see you soon, YouTube.